okay? Uh, mailbox, the communications from IBFX, and of course my journal. But I don't necessarily need this up all the time, and if I'm on a laptop or a single screen, I may not necessarily want it up all the time. Really easy to, to just kind of minimize it is you can see down here in this gray area where the tabs are, you just double click it, it'll make it a very small area. And if you want to bring it up again, double click it. It's a double left click. The click, it's, it's gone, or at least minimize, and click, click, and there it is again, to whatever size you prefer having it. Okay? Again, it's all about how much room do I have on my screen and how can I maximize the view of what I really need to know, which is the charts. All right, so to me, I, I like a quad view. Quad view means I like to look simultaneously at at least four charts. Uh, most especially if I'm on a single screen or my, or my laptop. That's what I was doing on my 13-inch MacBook. So I need three more charts, right? Well, here's what I recommend you do. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. Everyone's got a, got a different set of tools they use. We're going to be talking about indicators in, I believe, the next discussion. But all of us, a lot of us have preferences for colors and for the type of candle or bar or whatever that we look at. Now, I don't know about you, but I either prefer a black background with the yellow. This is a pretty, I think, a pretty nice layout. Or um, I like the, the white background. Okay, you can see there's a couple that are preset. Now, none of them may not, any of them may not be exactly what you want but you can absolutely tweak it to reflect what you'd like. So if I want to use a white background chart, and instead of the black and white up and down candles, I might want my bull candles to be green and my bear candle to be red. If you want to change the actual color of the candle, you do so through the bull and bear menu. And you, you'll get a sample of what it's going to look like. Now, I prefer candles. That's just me. So I'll make sure I go over to the second tab, the common tab, and I'll highlight candlesticks. And what I've got is a nice white background chart with red and green candles. Let's say I like a black background. Again, I go back to the colors tab, and I could choose one of the black background charts. The yellow on black is pretty nice. And this is now candlesticks because I chose candlesticks on the common tab. And, and that's not a bad looking can, uh, chart either. Uh, I find myself using this this pretty pretty often. The uh, black background with the hollow yellow for up, shaded yellow for down. Okay. Again, whatever is easier on your eyesight, and also consider if you do have some studies, depending upon what colors they are in, you want to make sure the contrast is right so you can see them properly. But again, take the time to customize it. Whatever your preference is, whatever your favorite tools might be, we're, we're going to talk about how to put tools in the, next, in the next discussion. But let's do a simple tool insert here. Okay? Let's say I like having a 200-period indicator, 200-period simple moving average indicator. Now the 200-period simple is probably one of the most psychologically relevant settings on probably the most popular, you know, indicator there is. I'm not saying it's the best or the most powerful, but it's certainly the most psychologically relevant. I'd say by and large, there's no indicator and no setting that's more followed than a 200 period simple moving average on the close. Okay, so let's say I want to put that on my, my charts. And that applied to the daily is probably the most popular combination of any indicator and time frame. Now again, pick the color that you like. I'll typically put this one in white on my on my chart, I can, I can change the thickness, I can change a number of things here, uh, the color, etc. Okay, but all you really need to do is go ahead and put that 200 period simple close, choose your color, choose your thickness, and you're in business. Okay, and again, we'll be talking more about indicators in, in uh, the following talks, but once you've got your chosen tools on the screen, this is, this is what you want to do, because this is going to save you a ton of time. You go ahead and right-click the chart. Oh, and by the way, one of the things that I like to do is I don't like the, the really prominent grid. I like the grid a little bit more subtle. 
And what I'll usually do for my charts, I'll go find the dim gray, wherever it is. Let's see, where are you, dim gray? Well, let's go ahead and just use this for now. I'll, I'll use a darker gray just so it's a little bit more subtle. And I'll find a gray that I like that kind of is not so prominent. There it is, dim gray. Third, third, uh, third row down, second column. So I like it a little less in my face. I like it a little less prominent. So now I've got this, cam this chart looking the way I want, my candlesticks, my colors, my 200 period simple moving average. Okay? So I'm going to right click the chart. And one of the options you will see as you go down this list is template. Well, when you open up a chart right now, the default is that, that black background with the green. I don't know anybody who actually uses that, but I'm sure there are, but I don't. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and save the template, and I want to call it default. It's really important you call it default, because what that does now is when you open a new chart, it's going to open up with that with those settings that you just created as default. You don't have to go about applying the template you created. You've made your preference the default for the, for the platform. All right, big time saver there. All right, so let's say you like a two-chart two layout. You have two charts open now, one of the one-hour dollar Swissy, the other one of the one-hour dollar Yen. I can go to my window drop-down menu, and I can tile them vertically. Side by side, I can see two charts simultaneously. Okay, depending upon how large your screen is and so forth, if you minimize this area here, if you streamline your toolbars, etc., you're going to give yourself more visual real estate. I can't stress that enough. Let's say we go ahead and add in two more new charts. I'll add in the cable, and I'll add in, oh, how about we add in the, uh, what do we got? Oh, we haven't got the euro. All right, let's add in the euro. New chart, euro US dollar. Okay, so I've got four charts, kind of laying all over the place, though, aren't they? Window, and boom. Now I've got a nice quad setup. Again, window. And at this point, I don't think it matters if you tile horizontally or vertically, it'll go ahead and make what I call this quad setup. So I'm looking at four charts simultaneously. Now my preference, and this is just me, but my preference is to create profiles. So follow me here. I don't mind looking at a collection of one-hour charts of you know, arguably, arguably four of the most popular pairs that are traded. Okay, I can look at that one-hour psychology, that one-hour time frame. However, what I like to do is I like to take a look at the same symbol across multiple time frames. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to my market watch window, taking the euro US dollar which is highlighted and dragging and dropping it on each chart which then changes the symbol. So I've got a one hour on four of them. Well what I like to do is go ahead and put a 15 minute chart. Okay so I'll click on it, I'll click on 15, click on the second chart here, click 30. I already have the one hour and finally, I'll take a look at the 4-hour, or 240-minute chart. So now I've got a cross-section of the Euro-US dollar, 15, 30, 60, and 4-hour charts, all in one view. Okay. Now, every time I want to change a symbol, I don't necessarily want to have to drag and drop this thing four times. I mean, what if I'm looking at six time frames? Sometimes if I've got the real estate, and I'm at home the way I am in my home office, my... My platform might have up to six, maybe eight charts. I don't have to drag and drop this thing eight times, right? I might have a five-minute chart and a daily added to these, these four. So what I do instead is I create a profile, okay? So what that will do is basically kind of, if this is a template, if the individual charts are templates, a profile is a collection of charts. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to File, there's the drop-down menu, and I'm going to go to Profiles. Now there's some that are already created by default within the platform. Okay, but I want to create my own, right, with my charts, my settings, so forth. So I, so I basically go to Profiles within the File drop-down menu. I go to Save As, and I'll name it. Okay, I could call it 
my quad JPY. I mean, I can call it whatever I want. I'll give it, give it a name that means something to you.